Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me for another read along and happy new year. I did actually want to finish chapter 10 and chapter 11, which are the last two chapters we'll be reading. I wanted to finish them and release them before the new year, but that simply did not happen. So I hope you can forgive me for the time it has taken, but let's go ahead and get into chapter 10. This is Omarion, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Chapter 10, Relationship with Rhythm and Spirituality. I am making the connection to life through rhythm. I dance. Everything has rhythm. To live is to be musical. I dance. Rhythm is the universal language of the soul. I dance. I bring balance and order to my life with rhythm and harmony. I dance. All emotions are connected to the breath. If you change the breath and rhythm, you can shift the emotions. I breathe. I am a powerful medium when I submit to the rhythm of my heartbeat. I listen. Cadence, flow, patterns, life is but an eternal dance. My mom was a ballet dancer. While she was pregnant with me at the precious age of 16, she continued to dance and have music be a major part of her life throughout my childhood. I often say I fell in love with dancing when I was in the womb. My mom was a dancer and had been for many years before having me. Even after my birth, she danced. She was even on Soul Train. Dance is embedded in my DNA. That's when my relationship with rhythm started. I had no choice but to dance. Fast forward to me becoming a father. As I prepared to become a dad, I attended some birthing classes with my doula and learned the importance and value of playing music for the growing babies inside their mother's womb. That was exciting for me, being able to play my favorite songs to Mega and Ame from the outside world. That experience was magical and still leaves me in awe. Knowing that my children could feel and experience the joy of music before coming into the world was exciting for me as a lover of all things music and movement. Both of my children, like me, have an innate relationship with rhythm. And I can only guess that came from introducing them to sound and the vibration of different types of music before they made it earthside. Rhythm has always guided my life not just as a performer, but also as a man. Thinking about the different ways it shows up in my life is striking, from the sound of my heartbeat to the rise and fall of my lungs while breathing. I am in tune and aligned with all aspects of how rhythm shows up in my life. And when I am on stage entertaining and putting on a show, the music takes over my entire body. This is how I know it is a part of me that I can never escape. There are moments when I'm dancing where I am no longer just responding to the sounds. I become the expression of the sounds. Over the many years of loving and being a dancer, I have learned to play with rhythm by controlling how I move, breathe, and take on new shapes. When I dance, I get lost in the best way possible. I become the medium of the music and I tap into another essence of my being. Freeness of movement opens up the capacity of my body and my breath that are unlocked with every step. Dancing is a spiritual act for me. It allows me to tap into certain emotions at the right time and explore the journey of becoming a medium of music. Many times when I am dancing, I am present, but also not present. I have learned to move and let go of the idea of being in control. Allowing things to just be in flow without force is a practice that I am constantly learning and evolving in. Just like yoga, there are certain positions and moves that open up the capacity of our bodies and breath that have been around for hundreds of years. Dance is similar in the sense that it's another ancient expression for being in tune and in touch with movement, breathing, and creative expression. Dance allows me to unlock things within my body. It reminds me of what is possible and what I am capable of. The spiritual side of dancing allows me to become quiet and exist in a space that only I can see. I sometimes view the stage as an altar and I step into a new realm of being. One night on the Millennium Tour, it got spiritual for me and everything disappeared. We were in a sold out arena, fans screaming, music blasting, and I felt like no one was there. It's almost like a pause button was pushed and I left my body. Everything around me stopped. This has happened before and sometimes it can be a little intimidating and scary. I wear in-ear monitors on stage for extended periods of time. 
When wearing these, you can't really connect with the natural sounds of the outside world. You can only hear what's going on backstage and sound check, which can be an odd experience for non-entertainers. Walking on stage, I can't hear the crowd, but I can see and feel the energy. It's like I'm tethered between two worlds. So when it was time to dance, it felt like I was the only one there. Me, the rhythm of the music, and my heartbeat. I wasn't thinking about where I was stepping or moving. I was just floating and being one with the altar I had created on stage. In those moments, I have to stay in tune with myself. On that night, I was getting carried away. I could feel myself leaving my body more and more. The energy and magic that comes from my spins and everything else in between were taking over. I was married to the music at the moment. Bringing myself back to reality is always important because I still have cues, marks, and places to be on the stage. Dancing is very spiritual in that way, where it can take over your entire being. Yes, you want that to happen, but you also must have a healthy relationship with it. You don't want to get so lost where it's like, damn, I missed my cue because I got carried away. Energy check. Relationship with rhythm. How does rhythm affect your daily life? What is your circadian rhythm? How important is rhythm? How important is timing? What are some benefits you get from dancing? Exploring the spiritual side of dance continues to teach me how to be a vessel for my craft. Experiencing this on tour night after night is incredible, especially because every show is different. I'm always making adjustments through my freestyle moments to maintain a sense of freeness and originality. From dance, to walking, to yoga, to stillness, I think there is so much value in everyone moving their body in some way. Dance, for me, is an act of joy and resilience. Life is rhythm. Every breath that we breathe is sustaining us and calls us to move and pay attention. It's essential to realize the rhythm of life and the timing of everything we do. When we're able to create this space of trust and attention in our lives, we begin to move and shift and grow. No matter what we choose to do or how we choose to do it, being fully present in our bodies is necessary for growth, thriving and emotional expansion. At all ages, we can find joy and play in the different movements available to us. Whether you're a performer or not, it's beneficial to trust the timing of your life creating a routine for your spiritual practices that can also link back to rhythm and its connection to the movement of life. When I'm not dancing or performing, I am finding other ways to recalibrate and reclaim my energy. Traveling all over the world has created space for me to get to know myself on a deeper level. I found that having a morning routine amplifies my ability to be clear-minded and present. I have a practice of waking up at five in the morning or rising with the sun a day or two a week which allows me to move slowly and be in a state of presence and mindfulness. Rising early and before the sun comes up rejuvenates my energy and reminds me to be in the moments of stillness that I'm offered. Often these early mornings include dancing by myself for myself. Tapping into this practice helps me not feel all over the place and prepares me to organize my energy and get clear with my thoughts for the day. Preserving our energy and getting into the rhythm of our lives means we have to sacrifice to get what we want. That may look like waking up at five in the morning, or maybe it means saying no to the things you know do not serve you. Creating a ritual and rhythm in our life is an extension of our growth. All the different rhythms in my life, personal and professional, have helped me manage and preserve my skill set. They've made me a stronger and more aware person and performer all the way around. I can't imagine my life without dance, music, and movement. It's my saving grace and a major part of my identity. Being able to find peace and meditation on and off the stage by listening to the beat and feeling the rhythm reminds me to stay attuned and present to everything around me. Dance is a teacher that knows no rules and has no obstacles. I am honored to be a student of rhythm and dance. Moving my body liberates me and encourages me to let go and try again. There is nothing permanent about this life. All we have is now. Thanks to my mother's early lessons on movement, I've been experiencing dance since before I could walk and talk. It has been one of her best gifts to me. I've learned how to be my true self, not only as a performer, but as a student of this life and craft. 
there is no greater realization than to see how hard work, dedication, and commitment to your craft can manifest into a life-changing practice. Dance is an outpouring of the exuberance of one's life energies. We do not consider somebody divine or godly unless their life energies are exuberant and overflowing. Sadhguru. Energy check. Journal prompts. Where do you need to create a rhythm in your life? What practices of movement bring you joy? How can you clear up your energy to become more present? Do you trust the timing of your life? What made you feel like you're the only person in the room? Well, this chapter really resonates with me. And um, at first I was like, you know, a relationship with rhythm and spirituality. And he started talking about his dancing and everything. I was like, okay, I don't know if I'll be able to relate to this. But as a music artist, I love the way that he is describing being in like how life is a rhythm right and every breath that we take is a part of that rhythm and so we have to figure out a way to be in tune with that rhythm and that's when we can flow through life understand certain things in life and that really that's really a dope way to think about it i, I can't believe i never thought about it before um and while i was reading this chapter it was honestly kind of making me a little sad because I recently, maybe like one or two months ago, realized how numb and disconnected I've been from my emotions. And even though, you know, in life I have been doing well, but of course, you know how you get that feeling like there's something that's missing or I'm not, I'm not paying attention to something. I feel like there's something that I'm supposed to be paying attention to. But right now I'm just going through the motions. That's kind of how I felt. And um, I felt very disconnected, like I said, emotionally from a lot of things. And that kind of ties into the nature of the industry that I work in, which is very brutal and very draining and constantly being rejected and things of that nature. So yeah, I think I developed a little bit of numbness to, co to cope with those things. But what Omarion is talking about in this chapter, it's a very beautiful way to think about life. It says on page 189, that was a very dramatic breath, but it says on page 189, every breath that we breathe is sustaining us and calls us to move and pay attention. It's essential to realize the rhythm of life and the timing of everything we do. When we're able to create this space of trust and attention in our lives, we begin to move and shift and grow. No matter what we choose to do or how we choose to do it, being fully present in our bodies is necessary for growth, thriving, and emotional expansion. And then on the next page, on page 190, it says creating a routine for your spiritual practices that can also link back to rhythm and its connection to the movement of life itself. I don't love the grammar on that part, I'll be honest, but... I love that. I love that. Creating a routine for your spiritual practices. Learning, he, I think he was talking about how he wakes up at five in the morning at this point, And that's the time when he gets to be able to slow down or even just be still if he wants to. And it makes me feel good because I recently feel like I have a wake up routine. I don't call it a morning routine because I'm not always waking up in the morning just for the nature of my job. I could be in the studio from midnight to six in the morning and there's no way I want to wake back up at seven o'clock to go to the gym why go to sleep at that point right so I call it my wake up routine but I'm very proud of myself because for the past two three weeks yeah like just before Christmas I started implementing this wake up routine and it just makes me feel really good and it sets the tone for the rest of my day and honestly that quiet moment where I get to, because when I wake up, just to give a little insight into my day, nobody asks, but here it is. When I wake up, my wake up routine consists of talking to God, meditating on my goals for the day. And, you know, prayer and meditation to me is like the same thing. You're allowing yourself a still moment to think 
organize your thoughts and whatever jumps out is probably what you want to focus on first. And so you should focus on that, right? But my wake up routine is a, a wake up, talk to God, meditate on the day, meditate on my goals for the day, what I want to see myself accomplish. And then because I want to have some kind of movement every day, workout and or stretch. Uh, these days it's been both five times a week, workout and then stretch at the end of my workout. Um, drink water, make my bed, clean something, read and or do a puzzle. I've been reading a book, a fiction book every single day and doing my Sudoku puzzle. And that, those two things, reading and doing a puzzle really just makes me slow down in a way that I don't always allow myself. And so I think my point that I'm getting at is creating this routine, just like Omari I mentioned in this book, creating this routine helps me to feel more in tune with what I'm doing. And I've, I've had this conversation with other friends before, right? The reason why, the reason why people are so like, I think there's the real pandemic and epidemic is the mental health crisis that's going on, right? I think a big part of that is because everyone's always going, going, going. We never get to slow down. We're never encouraged to slow down. We're encouraged not to sleep even. And it's very unhealthy and it causes a disconnect that I think, and it's a little conspiracy here too, there's a disconnect that's being pushed like to keep people disconnected, to keep people zombies, right? But when you allow yourself to slow down and listen to the thoughts that come into your head that are telling you what you really want to do or calling out how you really feel about things. You know those arguments you have in your head or when you replay an argument back and you're like, man, I should have said this, this, and this. It's the same kind of concept. Suddenly it becomes clearer what you should have did. When you're not allowing yourself the time to slow down and think about what you want to do, you're missing out on the opportunity to, to not have to deal with thinking about what you should have done because you were already planning what you are going to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's healthier. And then when you sleep, you're giving your body a rest, a moment to to recalibrate and reboot. But um, yeah, I think that's why I feel so rejuvenated because I have a time where I'm just sitting to myself, allowing stillness, allowing slowness, and not so much worried about hustle and bustle and i feel more calm i feel more peace i have less anxiety i know what i want to do even if i don't know what i want to do i know that i at least accomplished this wake up routine you know and i feel like i can conquer the day i can do whatever so i hope the same for you in this new year i would encourage everybody to create a wake up routine and um just like for me it's like the first three or four hours of the day really like yeah yeah four to five hours of the day the first four to five hours of the day are mine i don't really answer my phone for anybody unless you're special but i do my workout i drink my water i make my bed i do my stretches i do my my puzzle and i read my book and i clean something in my house and that makes me feel great if i did nothing else today i know that i knocked out these wake up this wake up routine and that feels good so yeah hopefully um you enjoyed today's read along which was Omarion, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy, Chapter 10, Relationship with Rhythm and Spirituality. Please stay tuned for the last chapter that we'll be reading along together. That is Chapter 11, which is called Happiness and Wholeness. If you enjoy these readings, then please make sure you like, subscribe, follow, leave comments, review, leave five out of five star ratings. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you'd like to support me a little further, go on the extra mile, then consider becoming a patron of mine at patreon.com slash LexiATL, patreon.com slash L-E-X-C-A-T-L, okay? And um, if you wanna follow along for some inspirational quotes, certain quotes that I pull from the books that I read, then follow my Facebook and or Instagram page, but more so Instagram because I'm more active on there. But that's Lexi Quotes, L-E-X-C-Q-U-O-T-E-S. Lexi Quotes on Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, until next time for chapter 11, my name is Lexi. Peace. <laughs>